Hey, I'm Friendly Baron and welcome to episode 6 of my series Casual vs Speedrun in GTA 5. To start fame or shame, both players will be switching to Michael as it instantly starts the mission after the end of the last mission, Friends Reunited, where Trevor came into the main city. This mission's gameplay is on the simple side. Drive down to the stadium to see what Tracy is doing with Laszlo, then we'll chase Laszlo's car back up the city in a truck. Most of this mission's actual content is in the long cutscenes, but we are skipping those because this series intends to show the difference between the gameplay only. But if you are curious, the casual would have about an extra 4 hours of time over the course of the run if they watched all cutscenes, and around an extra 45 minutes of cutscenes already this far into the game. This drive is a good show of how much the speedrun can save with advanced driving techniques. Even though the casual doesn't crash, the speedrun is saving time by curb boosting and brake boosting, along with taking good racing lines whilst dodging traffic. The traffic in this part of the mission is the normal spawn. The traffic in this part of the mission is the normal random spawns that occur the same during free roam. They could be anywhere on the road. That will be different during the truck section. The speedrun takes some risky lines on the sidewalk. Hitting one pedestrian is generally okay as long as no cops are around, but hitting two pedestrians or committing two crimes within a mission will give you the cops immediately, even if none are around. The speedrun will go off the dirt mound here to jump over the traffic. Then take a right turn into a chicane up to the arena, avoiding the parking lot entrance the casual will do in a moment. This saves drive time and skips a yellow dot checkpoint that stops you outside the arena, so we can instead drive straight up the steps to the front door for premium parking. The speedrunner is careful to not park past the large pillars, as driving into the door area any further will fail the mission by spooking everyone inside. As you can see on the casual side now, they go around the arena and are blocked by a scripted truck then come to a stop on the dot and have to run all the way inside. After skipping the cutscene, both players will begin the run back outside, but the speedrun will switch the first person up and back down the stairs faster. Once heading into the truck, the speedrun will go around to the side to open the passenger door for Michael, then punch the driver out. Sitting here recording this made me just realize this doesn't actually matter though. We have to wait for Michael here either way, and usually it is better to leave a door open for an NPC. But in this truck, once the animation of Michael getting in starts, then we can just drive away anyways. As the speedrun begins to move the truck, he pops the trailer off the back. Removing the trailer before getting in Michael into the car won't let the mission progress until it's rehitched, but you are perfectly fine to dump it as soon as you get going. The casual probably doesn't even know what button could pop the trailer off even if they were thinking about getting rid of it. This ensuing chase of Laszlo and his red Prius lookalike is an example of perfectly scripted traffic. Every car on the road for the rest of this mission is 100% the same every time, besides sometimes being different colors. Few missions are like this, but it becomes very obvious when replaying them, which they are. We can use the scripted traffic to our favor and know exactly which curb boost the speedrun can take, and how to avoid all of the traffic while still taking ideal racing lines. The semi-truck may not be super nimble, but speed is speed, especially without the extra weight of the trailer attached. As well, the speed will not follow Laszlo onto the train tracks here, and instead just stay on the road to avoid the dirt slowdown. Another small thing I want to note, in some episodes of this series I am cutting gameplay together to form segmented runs. I try to get the gameplay 99% correct, and while I am the number 2 runner and getting close to world record for this game, I can't be perfect every time, so generally I do 2 runs of the missions for each episode, then cut that together for the best bits of each run. Viewers familiar with the speedrun already may notice the occasional inconsistency, but it does not change the overall time of the speedrunner or the strats being shown. I'll also mention real quick that if you're a new viewer, there is a playlist of all episodes in this series linked in the description if you want to watch more. The casual just had a crash with some scripted cars that pull in front of the player, but the speedrun was fast enough to actually beat them through the intersection back when they were in that area. The speedrun will use the knowledge of scripted vehicles in this next intersection to trust what positions the other cars will be in and avoid them by just tiny amounts. In other missions, getting super close to moving cars is a huge liability as they often freak out and behave in unexpected ways, often right into your car, as I'm sure many people doing import-export missions in GTA Online know all too well. The speedrun takes a left turn to continue along this road up the hill instead of following Laszlo into the river as the casual does later. This is the only time in the mission we can really break away from the chase, as the limit on how far you can get away from the vehicle is very low compared to earlier missions like the van and the motorcycle and chop. Approaching the end, the speedrun flies out of the truck after jumping it off the side of the embankment, as you need to be out of the vehicle for the next cutscene to begin when approaching Laszlo, which finishes the mission for the speedrun. The casual is approaching the river now, and you can see the intended jump into the river to follow Laszlo. 
The midair jumping out of the truck is a new discovery for us at the time of making this video, and not fully understood, though we have found a few other spots to do it in too. Usually the game requires that your character be in a let's say, composed position, where you are standing or otherwise in control to start a cutscene, but Rockstar's consistency isn't great as seen in other spots in the run, so who knows why it works, but we make use of it. That's the end of the mission Fame or Shame, with the speedrun taking about 420 to complete the mission, and the casual taking 50 seconds longer. That's not much time save over the course of 5 minutes, but it shows how just purely optimized gameplay in terms of routing and movement can make a speedrun interesting without needing tons of glitches too. To begin the next mission, the speedrun turns around and runs into the road during the mission pass screen. This is necessary in order to get a car to spawn in behind, otherwise you will be stuck on foot for a while. Getting into the car, the speedrun calls the blimp from the phone contacts, then immediately hangs up. This call does not have to complete before hanging up, or even connect, you can just hang up right away. We want the blimp to spawn at the horse track, so the speedrun looks away from the casino area with the camera, otherwise the blimp will not be able to spawn in and appears elsewhere on the map. Meanwhile, the casual is... oh great, the casual is not doing anything because they are googling the cheats for the game and spawn themselves a comet. We don't want that our comparison, so let's go back a moment and try again. While we reset to see what our casual is actually doing, I'll take a moment to mention I have a new microphone courtesy of my awesome Twitch viewer Stadpad. You probably noticed the change if you're already subscribed, but I think I've got it dialed in and it should sound pretty nice. But if you have any feedback on it, let me know. For you audio nerds who might have more technical suggestions, it's an AT2020 with a Scarlet Solo. Getting going again, our casual is also running to get a car without cheats now, and gets quite lucky to get a Dominator in this area. Basically nothing better than muscle cars spawn around this bridge, and rarely of that, which is part of where the idea for the blimp strat that our speedrunner is doing was born. Our speedrunner is again headed to the horse track which is one of the three blimp spawn locations around the map, using this small alley as a shortcut to get to the tunnel. If the speedrun had been so lucky to get a Dominator or Gauntlet, they would be only about 5 seconds slower than this blimp. But the drive up the hill that the casual is doing can't be improved upon much, and the speedrun often gets a works car like an SUV they're in now, so getting into a blimp to fly over the terrain ends up being a lot more than the 5 seconds blimp up faster usually, especially when it's raining. When calling the blimp, sleep mode is automatically turned on when placing a call, so the speedrunner is also able to receive a call from Lester here, giving us our cut of the money from the jewel store job which we mostly needed as Franklin as we want to buy some extra and upgraded weapons during Blint's play in about an hour of gameplay from now. Text and calls can only be received between missions, and will mostly be playing as Trevor between the missions from here until we need the money, so it's important to get that call here, then put sleep mode back on as we don't need any other further calls right now. If our two players were in the same game, the speed one would be flying directly above the casual right now. The speedrun is pointed towards the start of the mission, which is meeting Davy at the top of the observatory at the edge of the city here. After getting pointed in the right direction, the speedrun has been using about half throttle to slowly raise the blimp while maintaining as much forward momentum as possible to be in the perfect spot to just jump out to start the mission. Landing is too slow, so we go to exactly 1,100 feet before jumping and use a marker on the ground to know when to leap out. The altitude is checked similar to using the altimeter to check the height of the plane in Nervous Ron last episode. It's a very tough strat and takes some practice in just getting a feel for it. Failing the blimp strat by dying when you get up to the top causes about a 2.5 minute time loss for the speedrun, so missing it when attempted almost guarantees the run dying. The casual is only now approaching the observatory and has to get out and run. Our speedrun would be able to get a little bit closer than this, but would still have the runaways. When the speedrun lands to the mission start trigger, they often take no or very little damage. There is an aura of invulnerability around mission checkpoints sometimes, such as here. So that's the infamous blimp strat, which is probably the riskiest thing we do in the run right now. Now begin the actual mission as Michael and the morgue waking up. In the mission, we are supposed to check some bodies for Dave to see if the identification is correct. The speedrun is going to be vigorously moving the mouse around in order to wake up on the slab instantly. Fun fact, if you sit on this slab and do nothing, the workers will eventually cut into you and Michael dies, failing the mission. Once awake, the casual will take out the guard and get his gun, then check the bodies as the game tells you to. After a phone call with Dave, the casual will begin to exit the area and enter the shootout to escape. Luckily for the speedrun, the game doesn't actually require you to check the bodies, and you can begin to just escape right away. The speedrun will creep around the corner, then jump a couple times for extra speed, hopefully not getting shot too much as they head towards this guy to slap him for his gun. 
The spawns in these rooms are consistent, so the speedrunner knows they can get the gun there, then kill three guys in the hallway, then shoot open the door to get the guy in the elevator every time. After that, the speedrun will grab the health pack for safety and run up the stairs in first person, simply skipping all the agents trying to shoot you by being nice and fast. Davey sends a text message alerting Michael that he can get his guns back in the back upstairs, but the speedrun doesn't bother with that and just heads straight for the window to get out. The game actually gives the guns back at the end of the mission anyways if you don't pick them up here. Meanwhile, the casual is slowly working his way through the shootout. There are a large number of enemies that can spawn and run at you if you don't move fast that the casual has to deal with. Then he gets his weapons back at the prompt of the text before also heading outside. Both players are going to be smart enough to realize the sedan is the faster car to take here, but the speedrun shoots the window out, which skips the animation of it being broken to unlock before getting in. Some guards come around the corner to the right every time, and both players take the left exit as the optimal route. From there, they differ though. The casual looks at the minimap and just tries to drive away from the cops he sees, while the speedrun will be driving away, but in the direction of the end of the mission, so they hope to be near the ending area just as the cops are lost. The speedrunner, well, me, I hate escaping in this mission during my runs. The cop spawns for the speedrun are very inconsistent, and usually driving across this bridge is blocked by a cop, and in this recording I had to duck to the right to just barely avoid a late spawn. The helicopter back near the hospital can be anywhere, which delays the wanted level cooldown beginning drastically sometimes. Basically, it's the least optimized and least routed part of the run, I think. We just haven't found a good way to get away here. The casual has dipped them down into the south city to escape just fine. It's not that hard, but you don't have a particular direction to go to. But they will lose lots of time getting back to where the speedrun is after the cooldown is done. As the speedrun approaches Franklin, they have to stay a certain distance away before ending the mission. Otherwise, the mission will fail. It's funny that if you listen to the phone conversation, Michael tells Franklin where to meet, but Franklin is already there before the call. This will end the mission Dead Man Walking, with the casual taking 8 minutes and the speedrun about half that at 4.5 minutes. Due to the silly blimp strat to start the mission, skipping the body search, and losing the cops in the direction of the mission, that's pretty significant time save for the speedrun. Beginning the next mission, Three's Company, the speedrun had turned around during the mission pass screen and heads to the car to blow it up. We need to get to the center of the city to start Three's Company, and dying here puts the speedrun at a hospital very close to the mission. The casual places a waypoint on the map and will just take the car used in the last mission over to the start. If you watch me or anyone else doing runs of the game on Twitch after this video is released, you will likely see a different strat here for the speedrun. There are some different options available now, but they are new enough I'm not including them in this episode and just want to get it out sooner than later anyways. At the end of the whole series, I plan to go back and make videos showing what's changed, and will make recurring videos now and then showing the strats we begin using to update the series. For example, just a few days after the jewel store job in episode 4 was released here, we found a new strat that actually makes it faster to go back to using the dirt bikes instead of the sport bikes. After coming out of the hospital, the speed grabbed the first car they saw and heads to the mission. A small reminder we are not allowed to use taxis under the rules of the speedrun category for teleporting, but we can steal and drive them just fine. The speedrun will have to watch a very short cutscene of time of day changing before the mission begins, which is one of the only downsides of using death warps to get around, but it's a very small impact on the run. Both players run towards the mission marker, but the speedrun jumps just before the ring of force slowdown to get closer just that little bit faster. The speedrun will then break from the forced slowdown zone by taking cover on the pillar and running ahead of Davey. We'll run straight to his car so we can be a gentleman and get him into it faster. And jump just before entering to, you guessed it, skip another forced slowdown zone. The speedrun will back the car up to Davey, and even though he gets spooked, he'll still get in much faster, and then the speedrun is on their way. The casual is still walking up with Dave and forced to listen to the ever important dialogue. I'm going to speed up the casual here for a bit early instead of at the end, for a slightly different view of the speedrun catching up to the casual, even on a simple drive like this. The ever important curb boosting and brake boosting gain the speedrun a lot here, and they will go into the opposite lane of traffic to get the extra boost, which is pretty safe on this wide section of the freeway. While they drive to the lot, I want to mention something about the length of my episodes and why I don't make them longer, or shorter. Personally I find the 15-20 to 20 minute mark for informational videos very comfortable for my own viewing. It's long enough to be engrossed in the content, but not so long that it becomes a barrage of information, hence why you will generally see this series be around that length. It just works out well that four missions at a time tends to fit that mold. 
I'll also take a moment to mention if you like my videos, a subscription really helps, even if you just watch from recommended anyways. The sub number helps stuff out in the background of YouTube and lets me focus more on making videos rather than having to spend my time at my real job. The speedrunner will help tap this pole as they enter the lot and it stops whatever the current dialogue is and forces the line that needs the play before the next cutscene to start right away. The rest of this mission involves heading to the Federal Building and recovering a guy with some repel work and sniping after the helicopter flight. It's pretty straightforward for the speedrun. Just fly up while occasionally letting off to gain some altitude. The casual just heads toward the building without realizing they need to be on top and has to turn back to gain enough height. There is no great trick to repelling down the building. The speedrun just perfectly times launching off the side again as soon as they touch the wall. Our casual will probably get better at this as it's done again later in the game. I am actively allowing the casual to improve as they play more, and it occurs slightly naturally too since I'm using different controls as the casual and getting better with them over time. After the cutscene and dialogue finishes, the speedrun is ready spamming the button to change the Franklin, and then it instantly takes the first shot as it's aimed at the guy for you already. The speedrun then proceeds to take out the enemies as fast as possible knowing exactly where they respawn, as they are again consistent each time. The speedrun then switches back to Michael as soon as possible after sniping a few more guys, as his pistol is faster here because the enemies die from a single body shot during this section. The casual enjoys sniping the guys freely, and only switches to Michael for the last enemy as the game forces to happen. The speedrun's game then heads back to Franklin with the choppers incoming, and they do their best to kill those chopper as quickly as possible, sometimes even on the first shot. Once the first chopper is down, the speedrunner will switch the Trevor to take out the other two. The game intends you to use Michael to shoot them down as being done by the casual now, but the speedrun will fly very quickly between the two federal buildings, and the pathing AI of the helicopters chasing you is not so smart, and they just fly straight into the building trying to follow you and die. One more chopper then spawns for the speedrun, and they continue the flight at about 75% speed to let the final chopper catch up and be killed by NPC Michael, which gets the voice lines to finish just as you arrive back at the end of the mission. That's all for Three's Company, with the speedrun taking 6 minutes and 40 seconds, and the casual taking about 3 minutes longer at just over 9 minutes. The better method of getting to the start of the mission, better flying and shootout all give the edge to the speedrunner yet again. Always so odd how he keeps being faster every single time. To start number 23, Hood Safari, the speedrun will switch the Franklin as soon as possible, and the casual checks the map to see what the next mission is, then sees they are best off switching the Franklin as well. The switch to outside this bar with the motorcycle always happens here, and both players head to the house to begin the mission. The speedrun goes to the side instead of directly into the yard, which makes use of the forced slowdown and using the tree to stop from full speed, instead of having to walk longer before the cutscene begins. After getting into the van, the casual will follow the yellow GPS route given over to the famous Grove Street cul-de-sac. The speedrun will instead go straight through the first intersection and head directly over to the next part of the mission. Even though they drive technically a longer distance actually, it's done at full speed the whole time instead of having lots of turns. This mission revolves around buying a brick of drugs that ends up being fake, and then escaping from Grove Street eventually getting onto jet skis. After the cutscene, the shootout begins, and the speedrun will switch to Trevor. The guys in the close-by car are ignored, as the AI of Franklin Lamar are actually helpful for once and take them out. The speedrun sniper shotguns the enemies down, then turns the grab the closer by enemies with whatever weapon of choice. After this first wave is gone, the speedrun just leaves. Using Trevor's invincibility power, which is turned on at the last minute to waste as little time as possible, the speedrun just runs past all the spawning enemies and cops in this area. The speedrun heads towards where the mission would further progress at the entrance to the canals. Getting near this entrance triggers the checkpoint, and then running just a bit farther puts us too far away from Franklin Lamar which fails the mission. After hitting retry, the game is a reset to the expected mission progress with the gang members gone and the cops behind us, which is a very nice skip. The casual has only just now cleared the first wave of enemies, and even fast forwarded, the rest of this shootout takes a significant amount of time. The speedrun has been in first person and will stay in first person as it's fast to run outdoors, especially when going up or down any kind of incline. Headed to the jet skis, the speedrun will get on the rear jet ski, as this means Franklin and Lamar can get onto the closer ones, which starts the cutscenes faster. Being on the jet ski isn't super complicated. Tilt backwards to go faster, and that's about it. 
The speeder will take a direct route over towards the next checkpoint of the mission, careful to not get too far from Frank and Lamar, or be in their way and get knocked off when they catch up to you for rubber banding. Once the speedrun reaches this point under the bridge, the mission progresses to basically a normal escape from the cops. The speedrun will go far enough to reach this point, then pull a U-turn and head back to land. The turn must be quick, and the speedrun follows basically this exact route towards the bridge with a slight left. Doing this causes one of the choppers chasing us to basically poof out of existence. It's not fully understood, but this line is a consistent way to seemingly outdistance and despawn the chopper, but any deviations we've tried tend to not work as well. Losing the chopper is important here, as the mission only ends once the cops are lost, and we need to get text messages between the missions in order for later missions to be spawned in. The speedrun heads up these steps onto land, still in first person, and heads to the road to get a car, and the mission pass screen will come up as they begin driving after grabbing a car. Car knowledge is important here, as there can sometimes be lots of options, and deciding between two cars, or a slightly slower car versus running on foot to a faster one can cause lots of time loss or gain. The casual has also just gone under the bridge to the split point, but continues forward. If you go right or left like our casual does, the game prompts you to escape with that character, so the casual runs along with Omar to escape from the beach, and steals a cop car to then escape from the cops. After that, you are told to return Lamar home, adding lots of time until the end of mission screen actually happens. The locations these missions end does influence how long it takes to start the next mission, but for our purposes of this series it's not a huge deal. In the proper speedrun though, I currently just count this mission, and the one you'll see first next episode is one split. That's also the cue to say it's basically the end of the episode after this mission. The speedrun completes the mission in 4 hours 40 seconds, with the speedrun taking 3.5 minutes longer for over 8 minutes in the mission, leading to a total time of 1 hour and 56 minutes for the speedrun, and over 3 hours now of gameplay for the casual. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have feedback on the new zoom ins, more or less of those, and the new end of mission timing information, or anything else you want to tell me, you can either leave a comment, join my discord, or use a time machine and send me a message before I made this video so I can fix it beforehand. Something something, see you next episode, and yada yada.